Have you ever heard about scriptable objects in Unity and have you got no clue how to use them or what they can be useful for? Well, I'm going to be shedding some basic lights onto the scriptable objects in this video. Normally in Unity, we always write monobehavior scripts and we've got those little nifty methods that come with it with the start function and the update method that we keep running and everything like that. We can expose some fields at the top of the script and say, oh, I want this bullet to be this fast or I want my score to start with zero and I want to be able to, I don't know, jump this high. But scriptable objects, it's a bit like a data container and Unity says themselves that it's a good way to store information so it's not duplicated in memory. And I find it a little bit difficult to wrap my head around how to explain that. So I've created a little script and how I've used it in, for example, in Line War when we do a lot of missiles and shooting and maybe we have some different camera profiles and stuff. So I'm going to be trying to show you a little bit how you can use scriptable objects in your game. I've created a basic scene here and I've got a few objects. And I've got this first one, which is a target. It's just got a mesh renderer and a cube and it's got a box collider and a script that I created called target. And you can see I've exposed a field called health and it's got 1000 in health. That's pretty good, depending on what, 1000 lives? No, I don't know, 1000 anyway. If I double click on target, you can see that here's the serialized field that I've exposed and it's given me a default value of 1000. And then it's got this private method called apply damage and it takes an input parameter of damage. And this is not even a public method because uh, we can actually call this one within Unity's little nifty mono behavior world. And when this is executed on the target, then we put a debug log entry just to say we're applying a amount of damage to this object and then we actually apply the damage by taking the health value and reducing it by the supplied damage parameter here and then we check if health is smaller or equal to zero then we just put in the debug log I've got no health left so destroy me and then we destroy the game object so eventually this object will be destroyed just to see that you hit it as well I've just said that when it's applying damage just put a random color onto this box as well so we can see that it's actually getting hit I've also got this weapon and it's got a weapon script on and a few things so we're going to run through it takes in an input here as well it's called ammo and here's actually where the scriptable object comes and this ammo is a container to describe here's I'm, I'm calling it ammo fast light so we're going to have a look at that in a second it's also taken in a projectile prefab which is a normal unity prefab those are more commonly worked with than scriptable objects and then I've pointed out a transform here where the muzzle is because we want the bullet to be fired from somewhere. And if I click on this one, I can see that the muzzle here is just at the front of our little fake weirdo barrel. And it's pointing, very important that it's pointing forward in the Z axis, which is the blue axis here. If we look at the weapon script here, what's it actually doing? So I've exposed these three fields, serialized field, and it takes the ammo input here and this type is the scriptable object we're going to look at that in a second it has the game object which is the projectile prefab and it's got the transform which is a muzzle and then in the start method and we know that from the mono behaviors video right because you watch that one it runs when you start and this object is spawned it runs once and then it uses the mono behavior invoke repeating and it calls this fire method after one second and it calls it every one second so you'll just keep firing a bullet every one second and the fire method down here so it takes this input value which is the prefab it instantiates that or spawns or creates it in the world and it's going to place it at the muzzle transform position and at the muzzle rotation that's why it was important that the blue arrow was pointing forward out of the muzzle because then we know that projectile is going to be spawned there and it's going to be flying forward into that blue arrow direction and then we have to do something as well I want to configure this projectile to actually have the specific type of ammo normally when I've done stuff like this in the past I've created a different prefab for every bullet maybe I've got a prefab called plasma bullet and I've got another one called the uh, kinetic energy bullet or nail gun bullet or something like that but I've actually really liked working with this new scriptable object type because when you pool ammunition then you want to be able to spawn maybe a thousand bullets and a whole pool of them and all of them are disabled and then when you fire a bullet, it just activates that bullet and it animates it or like transports it somewhere. And then when it hits something, it deactivates it and returns it into to the pool. And for games where you have a lot of bullets or like bullet hell games, then this is the approach you want to do because you don't want to instantiate bullets like this all the time. It takes a lot of processing power and memory allocation. It could make your game run a bit janky. So I definitely recommend, in, I'm going to be making a video about the pooling process in the future as well. But here's where the beauty of the scriptable object of ammo comes in. So let's have a look at what that actually is. When you create a scriptable object, it, it's sort of like a mono behavior, but it isn't because you have to replace mono behavior by scriptable object. And here I've actually exposed two fields. One is the velocity, which is 
a float and it defaults to 900 uh, which is actually not allowed because I'm only allowing a range here of, of um, something much less here I'm also let's see we'll default to something else here as well something like this and it also takes a mass so what's the mass in kilograms of this particular projector or, or this ammunition this is something you might not be aware of as well and you could use this in modern behaviors too when you expose fields and you can actually put a range property here and then you can put a tool tip if you want so when you configure these if i click on one of these that has got this one on it we see that we've got a cool range slider here that we can use and also the tool tip is you can actually put this one so when you configure your bullets you can have a whole bunch of cool properties here and this doesn't just go for bullets you could have vehicles or enemies or anything like that just imagine now that this scriptable object is a way for you to configure like a template or an archetype or a blueprint or something of a particular type of something and in this case it's a bullet i've also included here that you can actually use either methods or this is a public property it's called kinetic energy damage and you can call this one from like the mono behavior and then it will get what the kinetic energy damage is for the configuration of this one and it's using just the normal standard physics method to calculate uh, kinetic energy on impact it takes half the mass and then times it by velocity squared you can bundle configuration so it's a data container but it's also possible to put calculations and do methods and things in here which is, are really useful for this particular ammo in this case and this is also weird you probably haven't seen this if you haven't worked with scriptable object and create asset menu it actually throw something into the unity editor here if i go up to assets and create you can see that there's a new ammo here that's nothing unity specific if i click on that it creates something called new ammo and i can call this one fast heavy so it's created a new data object in your game here now and i can configure this one so we called it fast so velocity is going to be high and we called it heavy so mass is going to be high so i've got three different uh, data containers you can also duplicate these these are basically like assets within unity and if you change them they'll change permanently even if you change them during runtime it's going to change permanently which is a bit different from how you do with instantiated prefabs so in this case i've got these three ones and we'll go back into the weapon script what happened here so it instantiated the projectile prefab which is a prefab and then it sets the ammo of that prefab to the ammo that we've selected for the weapon and if i click on the weapon we can see that this fast light ammo is the one that's uh, configured right now for this weapon fast ammo what is this uh, projectile then we'll have a look at this prefab as well this is what's actually going to be spawned so what is this it's uh, an object and it's got a mesh render and a sphere it's a really small one it's like this and it's got a trail renderer on it and a trail renderer they're pretty cool as well you can add them and they can add a little trail so you can actually spot the bullet because if it didn't have a trail it, it would just look like a little flicker of a i don't know like a bb gun or something so this is just to make it possible to see it apart from the trail render we also have a projectile script and this is a mono behavior that i've attached to it and if we look at what this does it's uh, basically it's uh, i've exposed the ammo type which is uh, this is the scriptable object and I can set this from externally. And that's what we do when we instantiate this projectile. We configure what type of ammo, ammo, <laughs> animals, ammo it should be. Uh, then we have this update uh, method and a mono behavior. This runs every frame of the game. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move this bullet or projectile pretty fast in the direction, in the direction, in the direction. <laughs> in the direction it fa it's facing and here's the thing you might think that you should use like on collision and rigid bodies or something when you fire a bullet to detect like is this bullet now hitting this object but i don't recommend doing that because a bullet usually moves so fast that it might fly through the like a thin wall or even a thick wall it could actually go so fast that it's going to fly right through the wall it's going to update update and then it's going to ignore that there was a wall there and update on the other side that can happen for a fast bullet what i've done in this case in this demo example and this you could definitely use this for your own games as well in the future it's actually throwing a ray cast it's performing a ray cast from the current position of the bullet or the projectile in the direction of its own forward direction so it looks down that blue arrow if it hits something we have a reference here to a ray cast hit and how fast is it going to fly well we're going to take the ammo's velocity so whatever ammo this projectile is configured with, it's going to be flying at that speed. We have to multiply it by time dot delta time. Otherwise, it's not going to be reliable. Very important if you run the update method here that you multiply it by time delta time. So we're going to look for as far as this is going to fly until the next update. We're going to check, do I hit anything along the way? If I do this, if I get a hit here, then we're going to put the bullet at the point of the impact. So I'm going to move the transforms position of this projectile to the hit point. And then we're going to send a message now because we know what we hit and we're going to 
grab a reference to that collider of the hit, and then we're going to send a message. This is also Unity's mono behavior magic stuff here. And we're going to look for a method called apply damage there. And how much damage are we going to apply? Well, we can send that and we'll pick it from the ammo scriptable object. We'll pick the kinetic energy damage there. And that's actually calculated on the fly then. Whatever it was configured there with the mass and the velocity, it'll get that damage amount. And then I've also said that don't require a receiver because if you hit something that doesn't take damage, then it would throw an error if it hit something and it didn't have that apply damage method. So this is basically just going to be a silent fail if it doesn't have that and it's not going to apply any damage. When the projectile hits it, we want to hide the actual little pellet. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit strange that it's like a little BB gun ball <laughs> in suspended there by the impact point. I'm going to get a reference to the mesh render of the bullet, which is just a sphere. And then I'm going to set the mesh render enabled to false. And you might think, why don't you just destroy the bullet? Well, I could do that. I could just do a game object destroy straight away. But you can see here, I'm actually destroying the game object after one second. So why would I do that and not just destroy it instantly? Well, it's because if I were to destroy the bullet object instantly, the trail render would not continue to render. So when you hit something, it would basically just evaporate the whole trail. And it looks a bit weird. You want to have that trail just hit the impact and then shrink into the wherever it was hit. And then I actually also have to destroy this, which is this mono behavior. If I don't destroy or delete this projectile mono behavior, then it's going to keep going back in the update function here and just kind of try to do this over and over again and penetrate the, the target and just fly forward. So I have to destroy this so we don't end up in this update method anymore. Basically, we're sending an apply message to apply damage. We're hiding the mesh renderer. We're queuing the object for deletion and we're destroying this function so it doesn't come back in so the trail renderer can complete itself. If we didn't hit anything, well, then we're just going to translate the projectile in its forward direction by the ammo scriptable objects configured velocity and we have to multiply it by time dot delta time. All right, so if we go back now out of the projectile, we can see this in action. I press play and we can see here it fires a bullet and it hits it and we are applying 147 damage. And eventually, when we've reached past a thousand damage, then uh, no health left, so destroy me. And this one keeps just firing because it's <laughs> it's uh, just continuing forever. So we had 147 damage there. And if we go back to the weapon now, we can see fast and light ammo. What happens if we do slow and heavy ammo then? And then we press play again. I've configured new ammo types in for this weapon. It's applying 93 damage. Oh yeah, it's because it's slow and heavy. So it applies less damage because it's moving slower. So even if it's heavy, it's moving slower. But let's do the fast and heavy one then. So we'll grab this one, fast and heavy, press play. And now it's going to be shooting pretty fast and it just destroys, destroyed the whole thing. It applied so much damage, 6,250. That's a lot of damage. So I hope this gives you a little insight on how you can use scriptable objects. Again, I just want to say one more time that the beautiful part of this solution is that you can have one projectile prefab and then you can actually pull those up to thousands of projectiles ready to fly in any directions, but then you can configure them with scriptable object data containers like this to give them different property. And these are just a few examples. You could control, for example, how long the trail should be, what type of a material should be on the trail, if it should uh, reduce its speed, if it should have, I don't know, uh, maybe it should have bullet drop or something like that. So you can just extend this scriptable object now and configure it the way you want it. So that's it. That's a little quick intro, a basic introduction to scriptable objects for you. I hope you find use of this in your own games and uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you learned something here and if you want to learn more about game development don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I also want to give a big shout out to all my patrons you guys are making this possible so you can head over to patreon.com slash infancia I'll be uploading all of these things to the tutorial tier there so you can actually download my unity projects and things like that play around with it all right until next time have a great one and I'll see you then bye for now